Hello, lovely kids out there. Good day to you once again, as usual. It is time for learning with the e-learning platform by the kind courtesy of Great Victory Land Academy. It is time for science, and once again, I am your facilitator for this segment. As usual, I go by the name Mr. Amankwa George Divine. You can call me Morewan. It's time for science, and what do we have for today under science? We have the human body system. Repeat that after me. The human body system. Good. Now let's quickly glance through our objectives or what do we stand to achieve after this human body system? What should we gain or learn from this topic? Here we are. These are our objectives or what we stand to achieve after the topic. Now by the end of this lesson, people will be able to, one, find the basics of human life. Find the basics of human life. Good. And then also, you should be able to understand what the human body system means. The human body system. What does it mean? We should be able to get that. And then also, we should be able to list down the basic systems in human with their functions and organs. We should be able to come up with the basic systems in human with their organs and the work they do every system what is the work they do that is their function quickly let's continue now this is what forms the basics the beginning the fundamental of human life human life starts from organelles and cells cells and organelles are the basic unit of life cells especially they are the basic human beings, our beginning, our formations start from organelles and cells. Mostly cells. So cells are the basic unit of life. That is the beginning of human life. It starts from by cells. Human body starts forming by cells. From cells, a group of cells may put themselves together and they perform a certain task or they perform one function and group of cells working together with they form tissue when group of cells come together they perform one function and the way they do is tissue so tissue can be a group of cells performing the same function we have millions of tissues in the human body so many so so many plenty now some tissues may also put themselves together and they perform one function or they do the same work when tissues put themselves together to perform the same work or function they form what we call organs so organs are made up of tissues coming together to perform the same function now when organs also put themselves together to perform the same function they do what we call system so if we talk about system it is a group of organs putting themselves together or working together as a group let's take that again i said that the beginning of human life is organelles and cells so cells and organelles are the beginning of human life the fundamental now a group of cells can put themselves together and they form what we call tissue group of tissues coming together to perform the same function when tissues put themselves together to form the same function or perform the same function they form what we call organs so organs are made up of tissues of the same kind performing the same function now when organs also put themselves together they form what we call system and basically we have a lot of systems in human life but basically let's talk about the seven basic systems in human life what are they now before that first of all let's look at the meaning of human system now here you are on your screen you can read the human body system is a group of organs and tissues that perform the same function 
for the body. Let me read once again. The human body system is a group of organs. When organs come together, when organs come together, or tissues come together, they perform the same function. When organs come together, they form what we call system. So system is made up of organs that perform the same function. Let's talk about the first system in human. We are talking about the seven basic systems in human. We have other systems. We are not going to talk about them. We are talking about the seven basic systems in human. One, let's talk about the respiratory system. This system is responsible for breathing in and outside the body. If we breathe in air, we call it inhalation. When we breathe out, we call it exhalation. So let's breathe in. If you take in air, what do you do? What do you see? You see that what the parts that you call your stomach, it contracts, it deflates, it becomes flat. That the place is called diaphragm. So if you breathe in air, your ribs will open, your ribs will open, and then your diaphragm will contract, will flatten it meaning there is too much air entering your body. Now, if there are organs putting themselves together to form the respiratory system, that is breathing in and out. If you breathe in, it is inhalation. If you breathe out, it is exhalation. Which organs are responsible for respiration? One, the nostrils. And then, deep inside your nostrils, we have the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, the lungs, and the diaphragm, which is the part you normally touch as your stomach. We call it the diaphragm. These are the organs responsible for respiration. The work they do is called respiration, but the system is called respiratory system. The work they do is respiration. Let me show you the diagram for respiration. Here you are. Let's see the image responsible, the image on respiratory system that works on respiration. We can talk about the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity. The nasal cavity. You see where the red ink is being spotted. The nasal cavity. Do you see where I circled? That is where air first enters your nose that's the nasal cavity so from the nose it gets inside your pharynx you see where i've marked and then where i'm trying to make a rectangular shape there is the larynx so we have the nasal cavity or the nostrils from there to your pharynx, to your larynx, the trachea, it goes inside your bronchi, or the bronchioles, and then the diaphragm. The last place is the lungs. These are the organs that put themselves together to form what we call the respiratory system. The function or the work they do is breathing in and outside air. Let's go to the second system, digestive system. The digestive system is responsible for breaking down food substances into simple form that the body can use. Any food you eat inside your body, the, the function of the digestive system is to break down the food into smaller pieces or simple form that the body can use. The body cannot use, sorry to say, the rice, the yam, whatever food you swallow, the body cannot use it. It has to break it very down or into smaller pieces that the body can use. These are the organs that breaks down the food substances. And the way they do, or the way it does, is what we call digestion. So the digestive system, what do they do? They break down food substances into simple form. And as they are breaking down the food substance, it is called digestion. Let's quickly look at the organs that helps in digestion. Which organs break down food substances? 
One, the map. Digestion starts from the map. Apart from protein foods, all the other food nutrients you can mention, you know, the carbohydrates, vitamins, um, you can talk about the, uh, the protein digestion do not start at the map. Only protein foods, they don't start digestion from the map. But the rest, being in carbohydrates, fats, and oil, uh, water, minerals, uh, vitamins, they all digest starting from the map. So we have the map. The osophagus, another name for osophagus, is called gallet. From there to your stomach, there is a chamber in your belly. It is called stomach. It is a, something like a balloon. When you take in too much food, then it shoots up. That is why times after taking too much food, it touches your diaphragm and then your stomach becomes very thick and hardens. We have the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and your anus. Sorry to mention that. They all form part of the digestive system. They break down food substance. The work they do, or the work the digestive system does, is called digestion. Now, I want to give you the image of the digestive system. So, let's look at the image. Here you are. Do you see where food, first of all, enters? Aha! Uh -huh. Food enters your mouth, swallowed it through your gallet, or your osophagus. Your gallet is the same as the osophagus. And then down to your stomach, do you see that orange part like a mango? That is the stomach I'm talking about. Then it passes on to your small intestine and then also later to your large intestine. Any part the food will get to, there is digestion. So food starts digesting from your mouth. Food starts to digest from your mouth. After your mouth, when it enters your gallet, another digestion takes place. When it gets inside your stomach, digestion takes place as well. It further breaks down the food with the help of the salivary glands, and then also it goes down into your small intestine and later comes to your large intestine good so later on after the food nutrients which are needed to build up the body has been taken the rest is being taken outside the body through the animals now let's talk about the circulatory system circulation circulation this system is responsible for transporting oxygen water, blood, and digestive food that we talk about, they pass it all to the, every part of the body. The circulatory system, what they do is to transport oxygen, water, blood, and digestive food to all parts of the body. The work they do or the work the circulatory system does is called circulation. Now, which organs are part of the circulatory system? Which organs helps to transport all the blood, all the foods, all the water and oxygen to all parts of the body? The main organ for circulation is the heart. The main organ for circulation is the heart. And then we have other veins. I'm trying to show you the veins. You may see your veins and your arteries. You see your veins and your arteries here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They are, if you are fair in color, you may see them as green on your skin, especially on your arms. Those thin lines, green lines on your arms. They are the veins and some are the arteries. So we have organs for circulation as veins, arteries, capillaries, and the main organ is the heart. 
The heart pumps the blood and digested food oxygen and passes it on to the veins and arteries and capillaries so that they can transport them to all parts of our body. The work they do is called circulation. They transport food and water with oxygen and digested food blood to all parts of the body. That is circulation. Now, let's go to the excretory system. The excretory system. Now, this system removes metabolic waste from the body. They remove waste from the body and the work this system does is called excretion. The excretory system, they remove waste from the body. So any form of waste, being it urine, sweat, feces, sorry to mention, and think about any other waste, excess salt that comes out of the body, mucus that you blow your nostrils, any form of waste that comes outside the body is by the help of the excretory system. So quickly, let's look at the organs that remove waste or that works together to form the excretory system. Which organs work together? Which organs work together? We can mention the main organ that removes the waste as the kidney. I'll show you the picture. The kidney. They are two in the form of beans. It is in human body. They are not beans, but the image looks like beans. The kidney, the liver, the lungs. We mentioned that the lungs is part of the um, respiratory system. But the lungs, since the lungs absorbs air and brings out the stout or bad air from the body, it removes waste. That is air. So, if we are talking about organs that removes waste, we can mention the lungs as well. So, we have the kidney, the liver, the lungs, the bladder that stores urine before you realize that no, you feel like peeing or urinating, then you go and urinate. Which organ stores the urine? The bladder. And last of them, the skin. The skin. The skin. The skin, it removes sweat and excess salt or urea from the body, the skin. So mention the organs again, kidney, liver, lungs, bladder, skin, they remove metabolic waste from the body and the work it does is called excretion. Don't forget the system is called excretory system. They remove waste from the body. Let's talk about the image of the excretory system. Here you are. Have you seen the two images that looks like beans? Yeah, one is on the left, one is on the right. They are the kidney I was talking about. So in a good time, we shall go through them or another time. We shall take the organs one after the other or we, we shall take the systems one after the other and we talk about it well. Today we are talking in general about the seven basic systems. This is the image of the excretory system. They remove waste, metabolic waste from the body. The next system is called the nervous system. Nervous. The nervous system. Now, it controls all actions that go on in the body or outside the body. Any action that goes inside the body, that goes on in the body or outside the body is being controlled by the nervous system. At times, you tremble, you, you, you shake a bit, you are being controlled by the nervous system. So, this system is responsible for controlling all actions that goes on inside or outside the body. Which organs are responsible for controlling those actions? So the actions um, are controlled by the brain, the spinal cord, 
and the sensory nerves, the brain, the spinal cord, and the sensory nerves. They control the actions that goes on in the body or outside the body. The master organ or the main organ is the brain. Everything, anything that happens, they carry information through the spinal cord to the brain. And the brain will give the right information as to what to do. So they control all actions. The actions, some of them can be voluntary, that is when you are aware. Some of them can be involuntary, that is when you are not aware. In a good time, we shall talk about the various systems one after the other. Let's look at the image of the nervous system. The nervous system that controls every action. Have you seen the brain on top of your picture where the head is? You see that brown image there? That is the brain in your mind or in your head. The brain and then that line. That line from your brain down is what we call the spinal cord. Have you seen the line that divides the human body from top to down? That is the spinal cord. And then the sensory nerves are the thin lines in yellow um, labels. They are the sensory nerves. They sense every nerve. So we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. We shall talk about the nervous system alone another time. But they control actions with the help of the brain, the spinal cord, and the sensory nerves. Now, we've come to the reproductive system. Reproduce. Create more images of your own. Breed. Let's give birth. That is the right language I think you understand. Give birth to younger ones of your type. That is reproduce, reproduction. That is the work of this system. So reproductive system, they are responsible for recreating, um, sorry, recreation or breeding up young ones of the same kind, giving birth to young ones. Which organs are responsible for reproductive system or reproduction? The testicles, the ovaries, the uterus, the fallopian tube, they are all organs that help in reproduction, giving birth to young ones. The testicles, the ovaries, uterus, fallopian tube, just to name a few. Now here you are with the image of the reproductive system. On your left is image of the male reproductive system that helps to bring new creatures or give birth. And on your right hand side is the image of the female reproductive system that helps to bring out new creatures or helps to give birth. Now, let's talk about the skeletal system. Skeleton is the body framework of bones. Skeleton. If you take your skin and those soft nature of um, elements from your body, the rest is left with bones. They form the skeletal system. I will show you the image. So the skeletal system is responsible for supporting the body to stand uprightly. And in movement, they help the body to move and to stand. The skeletal system made up of bones. Now, which organs? I've mentioned the bones. We have the cartilage and we have the ligament. The cartilage at times you may chew a meat which looks very um, white in nature. It behaves as bone, but it is not bone. Um, you can chew it. It behaves as a bone, but it is not bone. It is very white in nature. It is always attached to the bones. That is the cartilage. And we have the ligaments also. Here you are with a diagram of the skeletal system. Uh, you may not see the names very well, sorry for that, but you can see the image that depicts or shows the skeleton of human being. That is the skeletal system. It is made up of bones, cartilage, ligaments, and the rest that you know later.
Now, I want us to end here with questions of the day. Now, you are to name three organs under the various systems in human. Three organs. If you take the respiratory system, give me three organs. They are responsible for breathing in and out. Which organs helps to breathe in and out? Respiratory system. Digestive system, that is breaking down food. Which organs helps to break down the food? Circulatory system, the one in black ink, that is the organ that transports blood, oxygen, water, and digestive food to all parts of the body. Which organs are responsible for circulation? And then the one in red is the excretory system. They remove waste from the body. Which organs helps us to remove metabolic waste from our bodies? Give me three. And then also we have the nervous system that controls all actions that goes on in the body or outside the body. Which organs helps to control actions of the body? The nervous system, the one in move color. And then the one in green color is the reproductive system that is giving birth to young ones of the same species or kind. Which organs helps to give birth to young ones of the same kind? And then last in brown but not the least is the skeletal system. Which organ supports the, bo uh, the body to move and to stand uprightly? I'll come your way again next time. Please and please, we are heading towards December. Very soon election, we shall see election. Please stay home and stay safe. Corona is still in town. We need you alive on 11 January. School shall resume. Please do the work and then submit them on due time for marking. But until we meet, the name still remains Sir George Amankwa Divine. You can call me Moriwan. It's bye bye.